Okay, in this uh, video tutorial we're going to show you how to turn your model, which is on the screen here, my model anyway, into a presentation drawing in the orthographic style, which is a common style, and it, you'll find out it's not that hard. So follow along. So the first thing you want to do is sort of prepare and have your model on the screen the way you would like to present it. In other words, in mine, here's my view cube, I'm going to go front on here. I have raised this arm a little bit because if it was laying down, I didn't think it would look as good. So I raised my arm up a little bit and made sure that looked like it was an active component. And I figured that's about it right there. So uh, that's all I have to do. The next thing I'm going to do is right click on the uppermost level of my drawing and choose uh, create drawing right there. So wait a moment and a little dialog pops up on the screen. Now it's very important that we do this step right uh, to get off on the right foot. The first thing you want to do is change your standard here. Instead of ISO, which is a metric standard, we're going to change to ASME because our photocopier has uh, not metric paper in it. We're going to click that and then make sure the sheet size here is 17 by 11 because that's the largest photocopier page we can print. So we are going to be printing these and displaying them. That is the plan. Once you've done that, push OK. It'll take a moment. And then we should see, as it changes now, a drawing appear on the screen. It pops up as untitled. We're waiting a moment. Let me get rid of this while I'm waiting here. Oh, well, maybe I can't have to wait to get rid of the X. Apparently we're gonna undergo some maintenance on April 29th. This sure is taking a while. I hope we are successful. Here it comes. And there we are. There's the drawing paper. That's uh, 11 by 17, 11 high, 17 wide. Now I'm not exactly sure what scale. It automatically pops up this dialog on drawing view. And when I slide over, it's trying to place my first view. Now you can see it's quite small. I'll just click once and drop that view and then I'm going to go over here to these little dots on the end I'm going to choose a different scale let's try one to four one to four looks like it would work and my other option would be one to two and it's probably might work we'll find out the bigger the better for this right we want to be able to see the detail so let's try uh, one to two for the moment push OK there we are and once I push OK you can see that well, that's interesting. I didn't realize my drawing, the two wheels are offset from each other. It's making the whole thing a little confusing. I can fix that in a second though. So I can drag the view around all I want there. And the next thing I want to do is create, that's the front view as they call it. Um, if I go back to double clicking on this, you'll see here it shows that it was front view. If I wanted to have another view presented, I could choose it, but we're choosing front view, push close. Now I'm going to pick it and I'm going to choose this button up here. It says projected views. So I'm going to project off my front view, the top view. And I'm going to project off of the top view, a right hand view. And then up in the upper corner here, I'm going to do a 3D view. And just push enter to finish that off. There we go. Now the 3D view is obviously too big. So what I'm going to do once my computer's finished thinking about this, as the wheel shows, it's still thinking. I'm going to change the scale of this view a little smaller because uh, this view is independent of these three other views. I can do things to this view that don't affect the other views. The other views are linked together. So I'm going to double click this one and I'm going to change it to a shaded view. And I'm not sure why my computer's being so slow, but it is. So hopefully yours will be faster. And then once it's shaded, I will change the scale to something maybe more like what we started with. And we'll see if that fits in the upper corner a little better. There we go. Give it a second to think about that. Sorry for the slow computer. There we are. Ooh, that's a bit small. Maybe I should bump that up a bit. What's my other options here? You can do custom options too, but we'll just try sticking with the standard options that are there. And waiting for the change. And that's it. So that looks pretty good. So it looks pretty professional so far, and we really haven't done all that much. Now, the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is 
learn how and show dimensions on your drawing. Now up here we have dimensions. I'm only going to do three dimensions. We're going to do width, uh, overall width, so your largest width, so in mine it would be the distance between these wheels, and the length and the height. Not, not the arm, but the actual, sort of like the overall constraints we had in the, in the uh, task. So what I'm going to do is head up here to dimensions and I'm going to choose one of these. The one I want to start with is a linear dimension. And it says it'll do a horizontal vertical distance. So I'm going to click that. And I'm going to pick the outside of this wheel. And I'm going to pick the outside of this wheel. And we're going to drop that down. Okay. So now it's coming in as 509.54 millimeters because I left my uh, original drawing in millimeters. I believe I can change that in here. See dimension units. If I click under document settings and I can double click that and then I can switch here to alternate units which are inches but I don't want decimals I want fractions and if I do it this way we're gonna round to a precision of a 60 push OK uh, then well that's interesting it put both in so I'm just gonna go in here and delete some so it's 20 and a 16th maybe I'll just redo it now that I have dimensions on there I'll click on that dimension I'll hit delete I'll go and pick that again it's just the easiest quickest way We'll pick from out here to out here. And wow, it's doing both. That's interesting. I've never seen that, but uh, maybe I'll jump back into my dimensions here for a second. And my units are millimeters. Display, I don't want to display both. I only want to display one. Well, you know what? We're just going to change this to inches. We're going to change this to fractions because I don't know how to deal with it. There we go. That should do it. There we go. 20 and a 16th, and I think our overall length was allowed to be 21, so I was within on this design. And I can always grab this dimension and lower it if I want, or position it so it looks good. And the next thing I'm going to do is do an overall height. So we're going to go dimensions, linear dimension, a height right here, two here. Four and three quarters looks like that could be spaced out a little bit. I'm just going to grab it by clicking on it and move it around a little bit. There we go. And then the overall width over here. So we'll do one more linear dimension from the outside. I don't even know if I got that exactly. Let's try again. Dimensions, linear, zoom in. Right out here, two, right out here, three and a quarter wide. There we go. It'd be nice if all these dimensions lined up with each other or pretty close. Now the last thing is, um, this would be the way we would display an orthographic drawing. Uh, it's possible though, because this is a display drawing, not just a technical drawing for building from, that we could go and shade the whole thing so that, and wait a moment, so that it just has a more impact to the people looking at it. Now the last thing I would do is my back wheel there is messing my front wheel up. Like they, they're kind of not in line with each other. So if I go over here to where I place my mousetrap vehicle, I could go find my rear wheels and I could go turn one of them off. I'm not sure which one I want to turn off. I would assume that one. Let's see what happens. No, of course it's not that one. So I'll turn that one back on, and I'll turn that one back off. Anyway, you could turn things on and off by going into your browser tree over here and finding that component and, and checking it. So once you've done all this, I'm waiting. Uh, yeah, that, that looks a little better, I think. Ooh. Doesn't seem to have had the effect that I was hoping for. Let me have to head back up to my outline here. I just want visible edges. I don't want the other style, which was hidden edges. Don't want that. Just visible edges. There we go. And visible edges with shading. Let's see if I can get this right. And we're almost done. Last thing is to save it. There we go. Uh, good enough for now. 
Oh, I've lost. Uh, I guess I can't turn my wheel off because I lost it in the upper view. We're just going to have to leave it on. The other thing would be to go into the main drawing and get them to line up with each other. If you change something in your main uh, model, you'll find that these two are linked, your model and your um, drawing. And there'll be a little indicator. So if I went in here and I rotated this wheel so that it lined up with the other wheel, which is going to be tricky to do, but say I did that. If I went and found that wheel and I was able to rotate it, uh, move, and I was able to rotate it. Let's see if I can do this. It's a little tricky. Uh, it's not going to show me the rotation, so I'm not going to play with this. Cancel. Uh, if I was able to rotate those or they were in line with each other, when I went back here, there'd be a little triangle in my drawing that shows up at the top that says there's been an update. If you click on it, your drawing will automatically reflect the updates. Okay, uh, if you get this little thing right here, it says something has changed where the, the dimension is no longer a little cautionary triangle. The dimension is no longer associated with the drawing, so you should probably, the easiest way to deal with that is redo the dimension. Um, and it was all me changing the uh, shading and whatever else I was doing in there. Okay, so there's good, and then we'll line it up real nice. That should work. Okay, if I'm done, I'm done. And the next thing I'm going to do is you can change your name down here by double clicking on it to make sure it reflects uh, the two of you or put your names up under here if you click on this title block here you could put it in here your your team team awesome there we go uh, i can't remember how to do this oh yes i have to push enter and then finish properties and then it'll stay okay Last thing, saving. Uh, normal save up here, you do a normal save and you can keep it in your files and it will save it as a, a DWG file uh, wherever you're keeping your stuff. So you can do that, save, but then the other one is to get it out ready for printing. So you go export, export a PDF, OK. Uh, down here it's save to my computer is what we want to do. Where's my mouse gone? Oh, it's waiting. Everything's a wait today for some reason. Oh. Oh, oh! everything's going great. My wireless mouse just ran out of battery. So here I'm on my trackpad. So you pick the end there, and now the last thing is you're going to put it into this PC on your computer. Then you're going to find under this PC the Maker Wood Students, or sorry, the shared drive. Get to the shared drive. In the shared drive is a folder called Maker Wood Students. In there will be an engineering folder. In the engineering folder, make a someone will make a mouse trap folder, and you can save it in there. Uh, I would have you print to the library, but we're not allowed to print to the library this week. So just save them in there, and I'll print them out. And uh, that's about it. Thanks.